pledge allegiance to the flag. We are going to call the meeting back to order. We uh, met earlier and went into executive session, so we are calling the meeting back together. Um, roll call, all is, are here. I would also like to announce that at this point onward, all board meetings will be videotaped and the uh, video will be posted to the district's website within three days for anyone that is unable to attend or would like to view the videotape again. It'll be available for anyone that would like to view it. I need an approval of the agenda for this evening. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Okay. I will now need an approval of the minutes from our meeting, an executive session meeting on August 24th. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, we are at the public comment session. Would anyone like to make a comment or have a question? Okay, then we will move right on to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Ms. Kloss. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Chen and our six visiting Chinese teachers from Hershey, China, Hershey District. Um, Dr. Chen, would you like to say a few words to the board? If you, excuse me, if you could use the microphone so that your voice is picked up. Uh, it is our extremely high honor to uh, sit in this the uh, this meeting, and uh, we came from the uh, Hershey District of China, so uh, coming to Clarence to follow the uh, intensive uh, spoken English language training program. So this is why uh, we brought uh, six uh, English teachers from Hershey District to be in Clarence School District. It is a high honor. Also, it shows uh, the, uh, the Chinese educator uh, circles are interested in American uh, education system and methodology. So uh, we just uh, uh, believe that uh, this exchange program will be uh, beneficial to both sides. So we just appreciate uh, the board understanding and support. Uh, thank you for interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you, and we are also honored to have you here. Would you like to introduce the teachers? Yes. So uh, this is the uh, the six teachers uh, from uh, Hershey District. Uh, first is the uh, group leader, uh, Miss uh, Du Hong. Then, and mm -hmm. another one is uh, uh, Miss uh, Zhao Hui Yuan uh, from our uh, uh, secondary school. Welcome. The third one is. Uh, Ms. Uh, Gong Yan uh, from our secondary school. Welcome. The, uh, the first one uh, is uh, Ms. Uh, Xuan Na uh, from another uh, secondary uh, school. The, uh, the fifth one is Ms. Uh, uh, Wang Li Min uh, from our elementary school. The, the last one is Ms. Uh, Gong Yi Yan from another elementary school. Welcome to all of you and thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge Dr. Chen. We've had this partnership for um, going on over 10 years now, correct, Mrs. Kloss? Mm -hmm, yes. Uh, we've had a number of different visitors from China. This time we got together, we had a reception. I want to thank Kristen Overholt, our curriculum coordinator, and Heather Hartman, who's really in charge of the visitation. Mm -hmm. We have a, uh, a unique and rigorous agenda set up for the Chinese teachers and we hope to learn as much from them as they can learn from us. The Chinese teachers are already involved in teaching uh, Chinese language at our middle school and our high school, correct? So uh, our kids get a huge benefit. Hopefully they'll get a benefit by watching our system. Thank you very much, Dr. Chen. Huge honor for us. Thank you. Uh, so thank you and welcome to the Chinese teachers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next on our agenda, uh, it is our pleasure to honor two of our schools. Uh, the Board of Regents is congratulating Clarence Center Elementary and Ledgeview Elementary on having been designated as reward schools, uh, indicating that Clarence Center and Ledgeview are among those schools in New York State that have made the most progress or have the highest performance with no significant gaps 
in student achievement. So if I can have uh, Principal Colleen Coggins and Principal Keith Kewick come on down. We have our very spiffy framed certificates from New York State, which you can hang in the hallway or in the teacher of your choice classroom. So congratulations. <laughs> Ledgeview and Clarence Center being recognized as reward schools. And now the highlight of the superintendent's report <laughs> is uh, Mrs. Overholt is going to provide the Board of Education with a rundown of all of the data from the state testing that took place last spring and the Regents exams that took place in June. Thank you, Dr. Hicks. Good evening, I am Kristen Overholt, the curriculum coordinator for the district. First, we're gonna start with the, um, the performance results from the New York State ELA and math assessments. This is going to be a, first off, a three-year look at the data, and the first slide here is showing proficiency rates. Those proficiency rates, what that is defined as, are the number of uh, threes and fours on the assessments. So we're looking at 2012-13 here in the blue, 13-14 in the red, and 14-15 in the green. So what you will see is overall on the ELA assessment grades three through eight for all six grade levels, we are trending upward. So we are definitely seeing gains. We have a, approximately 60% across all grade levels that are scoring at proficiency. The next slide here is Clarence's rate of proficiency for those three years versus that of New York State proficiency. So as you can see, Clarence schools perform at approximately 25 to 30 percentage points higher than the rest of the state on the ELA assessment. Next are the proficiency rates for grades three through eight math. Again, here's 2012-13, 13-14, and 2014-15. We are seeing an increase in the level of proficiency across all grade levels, specifically in the elementaries that are now uh, rising beyond 70% at proficiency. Gains have also been made at the middle level um, to note, grade six moved from 58% proficiency in 13-14 to 73% students at proficiency last year. This would be the second year that students in grade, grade eight that take the algebra exam did not take the math eight assessment. So you will note that here, though we see an increase again, a number of our students, 130 students approximately, uh, do not take this assessment. They take the uh, eighth grade integrated or uh, eighth grade algebra exam. So those students are not included in this graph. Again, here's going to be uh, our students at proficiency compared to that of New York State. Much like the ELA our students are performing about 30 percentage points higher than the rest of the state. For our Regents exams, here's a look at the passing rates over the last four years. Again, this was the second year of the Algebra Common Core, as well as the grade 11 English examination. This was the first year of the Common Core geometry. Again, this is students that performed at a 65 or better. And this next slide 
is students that performed at a mastery rate. Mastery means that they performed at an 85% or higher on the Regents exam. And again, just to note, for, for passing, we are at about a mid-90 percentile in terms of the number of students that are scoring at a 65% or higher. We average about 95% student passing rate. For the mastery, we're looking at anywhere primarily around 50 to 60% of our students are scoring at a mastery rate. They're scoring above an 85%. At the middle school, where students are taking algebra and earth science, that mastery rate is upwards in the 90% 90, 90 range. This next slide is um, a graphic of teacher performance. This is the percentage of teachers um, that performed at highly effective or effective. We have 86% of our teachers in the highly effective range for the 14-15 school year. Um, I'm sorry, for the 14-15 school year and about 14% at the effective range. This last bit of data was very interesting, so we wanted to share it today. This is the Power School data for the 14-15 school year. Power School is the student information system that we utilize for the district. And we have an application called Parent Portal that allows, allows parents, and at the high school, we have a student uh, login that allows students to log into their accounts. So I wanted to share this data with you this evening. Um, we have two sets of data. One is from the mobile application of Parent Portal, and the other is from the web portal data. The first is just um, from the Clarence High School. For the mobile app, we recorded 30,000 total parent mobile sign-ins. So that would be on their device, 30,000 sign-ins. Total students, 11,700 logins by students on the mobile application. On the web portal, so in other words, you would sign in from a desktop computer or a laptop at home. We had 216,000 logins from the web portal, 49,000 students logged into the web portal. District-wide, the numbers were even more impressive. So again, this would include all six buildings. So we had 48,000 total logins by parents on their mobile devices, and 11,000 uh, by a student, by student devices. And for the web portal, we had 365,000 total logins by parents on the web application for, uh, for PowerSchool, and 49,000 student web sign-ins. So it's pretty impressive in, uh, data that we wanted to share. I with can't you see from where I am, but at uh, what time period are we looking at? One year? We are looking at one school year. So okay. this data was taken from September 1st of 2014 to June of 2015. So June 30th of 2015. Yes. And that's all the data I have for this evening. I'd be happy to take your questions at this time. Um, so, I, one question. Uh, sure. I'm taking a look at the, the Regents exam data for um, the Algebra 2. Um, I mean, the, it's, it's sometimes hard to tell looking at these things because of sure. the statistical significance of small variations, but it, it seemed to dip a little bit. Is, there, is that kind of a known thing? Do we, do we kind of have an understanding of where that's coming from? We, we did take a look at the data, and, and you are correct. Though we see that decline, it's, it's single percentage points. This will be, um, I should say, the, the last year. Truly, we are gonna actually offer both the Common Core Algebra II trigonometry, the new exam next year. That will be the first iteration of that exam. We'll be offering the Algebra II trig, the old version as well. But we are moving to the new Common Core regions this year. So all students will take the Common Core exam at the end of this year. So we noted that trend but we also are moving into the new Common Core re Regents okay. curriculum this school year, yes. So does that kind of reflect some of the, um, the teaching that's kind of been leading up to the new, the new uh, class or, is it, or the new exam or is it just kind of a variation in the, in the testing? Um, I don't think it's safe to say that they have 
completely changed their curriculum to Common Core yet. That has not been done. That will be done this year. Um, some of this might be a function of the number of kids who sign up for Algebra II, okay. which is normally a smaller number than geometry or everyone takes algebra. Um, it's just a few percentage points. Right. So for us, it's statistically insignificant That's at this point. point, although the Algebra II team, along with the building principal and Kristen, they will examine in a granular method the question by question topics to see if there's something yes. that they need to emphasize. Okay. And when that happens, we'll get back to you on that. All right. Thanks. Any other curriculum questions, or I'm sorry, uh, state test questions for Kristen or Power School stuff? Just a general question relative to the comparison of first New York State. I presume that includes all the districts, including the Big Five, is that correct? Correct. correct. Do we have access to slice the data and do it against the comparative district of Western New York? Yes. So if the board would like us, we do some things internally based on similar schools. Mm -hmm. um, for example, Orchard Park, Williamsville, East Aurora, schools that are much like us, mm -hmm. socioeconomically and from a performance standpoint, we can show you those. We can also show you compared to just Erie One BOCES, um, or we can show you compared to just students who reach proficiency versus Clarence. So there's multiple ways to look at it through this mechanism called the data warehouse. If you let us know what you'd like to see, we'll show you those basis of comparison. We are working on those reports right now. We have a, a cohort, Mike, um, based on 12 schools that are across the state. Mm -hmm. Rochester schools like Pittsburgh mm -hmm. um, and Brighton from the Rochester area, Skinny Atlas from the Syracuse area. Those are the kind of schools that we would that we would take plus some schools from Long Island. Yeah. We'll get that to the board. Uh, along similar lines, and actually, I guess to my earlier question, um, having some, I, I like the I like the measurement over time, and I think it, it you know that just as a general trending thing, it, it helps. But um, having some sense of what is really statistically significant based on the population that, that these things you know, would also be helpful. That's great. Sure. And for the high school Regis exam data, once you get to about 93% passing rate, it's difficult to move higher. Right. Although our high school teachers are tremendous in terms of their passing rate and their mastery rate when compared to school districts in Western New York and compared across the state as well. But we'll get you that. We'll get you the good comparison data. That's the stuff that the teachers end up looking at anyway. Question: How would, how you feel the the opt outs affected yeah. the score here? And what percentage yeah. opted out overall? That's a great question. Um, we had about um, anywhere, depending upon the building, between uh, 26 and 30 percent of the students opt out in grades three through eight. Uh, the state actually sent us information statewide saying that kids who tended to score lower were the ones that tended to opt out. We don't believe that metric was the same for Clarence. First of all, we have less kids that score lower to begin with. Um, we, our feeling is that kids in the three and four range were the kids that tended to opt out in our elementary schools. We think that in the long run, if opting out continues, it's going to have a profound effect on the data that comes out, on the comparative data that gets published in places like Business First, and maybe most importantly, the information that we get for APPR with our teachers. So I think that's a tremendous question. We Let us get you for next month the opt-out percentages or in one of the Friday updates so that you can see exactly how the apples to apples comparisons met. We do have that. I mean, would, would it be something that we look at there the regular average in the in the classes and sure. as opt outs and get an idea yes. of how it might have impacted. Well, what it. we can do is we can give you the information about based on how they had done in previous state tests, which is kind of an apples to apples. So if I had a student and they were in seventh grade and they opted out of the seventh grade math test, we could tell you how that kid had done in sixth and fifth and fourth. And normally the, there's um, a validity or a reliability between those those grade levels. Kids tend to be about the same place year over year. So we can give it to you that way. Or one of the things that we like to have, state tests are one measure of student achievement. There are better measures even. Um, I argue that the uh, recommendation of their teacher that has had them the entire year and has seen them through their ups and downs is a much better indicator about the growth of the child than one test that the kid takes on one day. However, we can give you 
How did they do on their quarterly grades? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I don't necessarily need all that data. I'm just wondering what we looked at internally as right. a district. Um, we would look, if a student had opted out of a test and we needed to make a decision on whether or not they needed to go into an intervention service or some other type of extra help, we would look at their quarterly grades, we would look at the recommendations of their teachers, and we would look at any other standardized instruments that we have, sometimes teacher-created final exams, things like that. Okay, those are, those are great questions. Any other um, data questions for us? Okay, that concludes the superintendent's report, Ms. Claus. Thank, Thank you. Okay, we'll move over to finance. Sure, for the um, financial piece, we have our schedule of bills. Uh, it's not much to note on that. I did want to mention that we are shooting for November 1st for the GPS system for our buses. Um, you know, that would be to uh, track the buses. Parents will be able to track where their student is, um, where their student's bus is at least. And we can also uh, improve our maintenance, preventative maintenance program that goes along with that. For the October board meeting, you'll have July and August financial reports as Actually, we had to wait, you know, process July's until the audit is done mm -hmm. with all the adjustments that happen. Okay. With, with regards to um, the GPS thing, what kind of uh, communication are we, are we planning to inform parents? I mean, is there, is there anything that needs to be logged into or is it just on it's, a website? It's gonna, be, um, it's gonna be a process not dissimilar to what we did when we had the food service program and every child has a unique number. So um, what we did at that time, and again, we're still ironing out, ironing out the details with Tyler Technologies, but uh, what we did at that time, we sent a unique letter home to every parent of every student with their login number in essence. So that, that's, that's the basic plan, but we are going to work with Tyler again to uh, get some of the details ironed out. Okay, thank you. The next item is the audit. John Chavon from Lemster McCormick uh, presented uh, uh, earlier this evening to the audit committee the 2014-15 external audit. Uh, he spent quite a bit of time explaining the GASB requirements for the audit and uh, mentioned that there are no management letter comments to note and that the district is in great financial position uh, our fund balance is right at the state 4% threshold, and we do have enough funds to cover the 1.85 million that we appropriated for this coming year to um, offset the tax levy. Uh, Mrs. Cross, uh, chairperson of the yes. audit committee. Um, anyone else that was at the meeting is welcome to chime in, and this information will be available on the district website. The uh, GASB 68 for accounting for pension costs uh, information is also available. Uh, and what is explained in great detail. So if there are no further questions, um, uh, Mrs. Cross is the chair of the audit committee, um, uh, accepted the audit on their behalf, and I'd like to recommend that the full board accept the 2014-15 audit. So we need a motion for F1, F2. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, personnel. Thank you, Mrs. Claus. Uh, you have the uh, instructional agenda as well as an addendum before you this evening. We have resignations. Uh, we also have a request for leave of absence, uh, change in status. This is a result of uh, a teacher producing evidence of uh, previously having earned tenure. It was a retroactive tenure appointment uh, dating back to uh, 2014, which she just received this past August. So we need to adjust her probationary period here at Clarence. A number of appointments, probationary as well as regular substitute positions, a Regents Review Instructor uh, for this past summer, extracurricular, you have before you uh, the schedule of winter sports for review this evening. We also have uh, Clarence High School activities along with the addendum and the addendum, the items bolded are the items that did not appear on the regular agenda or on any previous agenda. Appointment of a mentor for the coming school year, presentation compensation, summer curriculum projects, 
the community education program for the fall winter session, as well as additions and a deletion to the substitute teacher list. Does anyone have any questions or comments? No? no? Okay. And I need a motion P1 through P7. So moved. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Okay. You also have before you the non-instructional agenda. We have resignations, a change in status, two individuals, appointments, school monitors, teacher aides, summer employees at Harris Hill, a bus driver doing bus washing, and modifications to the substitute list. Do you have any luck getting bus drivers? Uh, we'd like to see more. Okay. Okay, uh, motion to uh, accept P8 through P11. I'll make a motion. Okay, second? Second. Those in favor? Okay. The next item on the agenda is the uh, re approval or ratification of the agreement between the Parents Teachers Association and the Clarence Central School District. We began negotiations with the Clarence Teachers Association back in December, and on August 11th, we uh, completed our 13th negotiation session. This is a three-year agreement uh, dating back to July 1st of this year and extending through June 30th, 2018. Uh, as you can see uh, from the memorandum of agreement, uh, there are marginal increases in salary. Uh, the top step increase is uh, $1,500, which is less than 1.6% uh, uh, increase. Uh, we did realize uh, significant concessions in the area of health care with increases in uh, co-pay contributions, as well as uh, increases in uh, contribution toward the overall premium of the uh, health insurance. Um, those are the major items uh, up for uh, your approval this evening. Okay, I would like to give uh, everyone an opportunity to make any comments or ask any questions um, prior to the resolution. Dennis, we'll start at your end. Um. I've reviewed it a few times, and I think it's within the guidelines that the board uh, gave to our administrators to uh, carry out. I think it's a fair agreement for everyone, and uh, I, I will support it. Uh, yeah, the same. I, I've looked at it, and I'm, I'm comfortable with the agreement. I, I have some concerns about the, you know, the impacts of the agreement in the long term, I think it, you know, it touches, it increases the, the high end of the, the schedule, but it really doesn't, it's not balanced throughout. So uh, on the low end of the schedule, when I compare it to other districts, you know, our district is, has lower starting salaries than, than comparable districts in the area. And then this would push the higher end of it, up, you know, several percentage points above the top end of other of other districts, you know, three percent in Williamsville, seven and a half percent over the top of uh, East Aurora. So when I looked at it, I, you know, I, I didn't think that the and with the impact of the of the upper end of the contract, I'm concerned because we have over less than ten percent of our teachers are at step, you know, below step ten on the scale. So over the next 10 years, we're going to have 90% of our teachers reaching the top step, and the impact of that is going to be over, you know, if we have, even if we have 10 teachers retire every year, it's still going to be $7 million difference over a 10 year period. And, you know, the, the percentage wise of the, of the increases, you know, I, I'm concerned that the, it's going to be tough to keep it within the tax cap. And, and have that type of balance there. So I think a lot of people are clamoring to have more teachers and more teaching positions restored. I think that this has a negative impact on being able to restore positions and add teachers to the district at a time when you know, we have to be concerned about, about class sizes and, and things like that. So I, I do have some concerns about it, but I think it's the best deal that, you know, that, that we could have expected based on the bargaining position that we have with uh, the Triborough Amendment and, and the, you know, the 
Taylor law and, and other issues that we have. I believe it's the best that we, we could have expected, but I, I still am concerned about the long-term impact of it. I guess it's just easy for me to read what I wrote to, instead of rambling on. Um, so I guess in approving any expenditure, uh, in this case the CTA contract, it's incumbent upon the board to balance the many competing goals and interests at play in order to ensure that we are meeting our overarching goals. Uh, and I have those listed as two. One, providing what's the best educational environment for our children in the short as well as the long term. And two, ensuring that we are spending the resources at our disposal in the most cost-effective manner possible. I think we can all agree on these goals, uh, but I would uh, venture to say we might differ on how best to accomplish them. While the contract before us comes with some incremental costs in the first year, it offers us an opportunity to be slightly favorable position in future years with some of the trade-offs obtained. <clears throat> when negotiated under the current parameters which the district must operate under, uh, under New York State law, one must remember it's not about getting only your way. A negotiation involves meeting halfway, making trade-offs, and in the end working towards incremental change. I think this agreement before us tonight accomplishes that and represents a fair contract given all the factors at play. The contract before us tonight recognizes the hard work, dedication, and results obtained by the Clarence teachers by providing for a modest increase for those teachers that would not get an increase otherwise, <clears throat> and providing for various cost containment changes to the health care contributions and copay structures that help us to mitigate costs into the future. Therefore, I'm, I'm supporting this agreement. I, I would agree that uh, under the circumstances, this is probably the, you know, the best that we could have <coughs> gotten uh, in our negotiations if we wanted an, an agreement this year. Um, at the beginning of the process, we as a board set some parameters, uh, you know, ideally to achieve some structural changes that would, you know, improve our ability to stay within the tax cap. I think we made some minor gains on that. You know, we increased the insurance contributions, the co-pays. We added another salary, a step to the salary schedule. We also added some retirement incentives for those who retire in their first year of eligibility. I think that helps. Um, but basically, we, we, we didn't achieve any real significant you know, uh, changes that would help us long term. Mike talked about making the incremental changes. I think we did get some of that, and we're, we're heading in the right direction here. But basically, I, I, my feeling is that we're kicking the can down the road here a little bit. I think we're in a, in a good position financially where we can probably make it do the next three years but my my concern is you know maybe longer term there a little bit the, the other problem is you know even even you know the, the small changes I think just by the numbers given us it would be this contract would average 4.2 percent over the next three years each year but our cap number is going to be much less than that. You know, I, I think our caps, I don't know, we don't know the cap, but it's looking like it's going to be, you know, the 3% range. Am I, am I right in saying that, Rick, Jeff? So right just, just from there alone, um, you know, it doesn't quite add up. I, I, my question would be, you know, what's our, what's our plan then? to be able to pay for that every year because we're going to be short every year. Are we relying, we're relying on the state to come through? Pretty much, right? Yeah, I'd say yes, that we're relying on the state for anywhere between two hundred and fifty and five hundred thousand dollars per year to make everything work, which would be on the low end of what we've received even in the worst of years. Also, we want to remember that three percent on the property tax levy is a, is a greater number than four percent on the instructional salary number. So when you're looking at a lower percentage, but it's on a much higher number. So there's still funds available through that avenue to, to, right. to but carry I mean, the that's, that's assuming it, <clears throat> everything else stay, doesn't go up. If everything else goes up 4%, four, four you know, we have other contracts that will negotiate, and we'll see how they'll go. So that's, my, that's my, con my biggest concern is saying, well, if our expenses keep exceeding our income, at some point, uh, it's not going to work. And, and what do we do then? I mean, we have to lay off. Is, is that where we're headed? Is that? I mean, we, I'm okay with that if if everybody on the board is okay with that. And 
and we think we're going to be good in the five-year plan that we presented to the community at the end of the budget process had this salary increase built into it yeah. we feel like with very conservative projections we're going to be in good shape with that now if something drastic happens we'll have to make some tough decisions yeah. but we think we're okay we don't think we're going to have to lay off I'd agree with Jason that adding people back is more problematic the tighter things get um, after this year it may not be possible to do what we did this year in terms of adding people back but from a status quo pers perspective and even if we get the retirements that we're projecting we think we'll be able to pay for this contract so I mean it, it should be okay and but we're, we're crossing our fingers a bit and, and uh, personally I don't it's, you know I don't always know if that's a great strategy to do but um, I'm so I'm, I'm somewhat torn over the, the, the contract here you know I uh, I believe it's the best deal we can get right now and I try and be a practical person and and you know from a practical point of view this is this is the deal but uh, in the end I think I'm gonna choose to vote against it I think I, th I think it's you know we have you know the board will end up passing it but uh, you know my the reason I would do that is because I think at some point we have to you know we have to start to, somebody has one of us has to stand up and say all right this is you know we can kick the can down the road but at some point we're gonna have to start making some hard decisions and I think I think there's some solutions out there you know we've talked about it before um, and uh, hopefully we can get there but anyways that's my that's my position I think the parameters um, that we put forth, I think they're, they were met. Um, I believe each side made concessions, and I think it's a good contract. We met extensively to talk about the parameters that we would like to have seen. Um, and the important part, I think everybody recognizes, it, is the negotiations. And it's also, um, you can't go in uh, with unrealistic expectations. We all understand the parameters that we're trying to operate under with the tax cap and for all intents and purposes a freeze in other areas. Um, we went in asking for some uh, recognition of their contribution for the teachers toward health insurance costs. Uh, and we also asked for some uh, changes in the co-pays and the deductibles and they were met. Uh, part of the cost salary structure is out of our hands in terms of the steps but still with some recognition for the job that the teachers do for our students every day. Um, I'm not interested in doing uh, overhaul uh, slashing of things just so that we can say that um, we have everything under control and we're good for the next 10 years. I think we have to address the things as they unfortunately arise such as where we're going to be for the tax cap number, but I think it's unrealistic to say that, um, that we would have put nothing on the table uh, in this uh, negotiation process because it, it would we would be forever in a stalemate it was it was not feasible to do some of the things that were suggested they were it would never have happened in which case um, you know I, I want I, I know that everyone wants it to be a relationship that is a good relationship with uh, the people that are in front of our students every single day and also to recognize the contributions that they make every single day with that being said we also had the responsibility to the people that live in this uh, town and I think that that has been historically done and proven um, time and time again when you look at their tax rate that is put uh, for people that pay on their uh, property and um, it's a collaborative uh, endeavor and one that I think while uh, all of the reservations that were listed today are imperative that we address we're not going to address all of them at, w at one point at this point these are systemic issues that have been part of uh, what school districts have been dealing with for way before some of us were probably born. So we need to uh, continue to do what we do in terms of uh, cost containment, which we know we do. Uh, we don't uh, do wholesale uh, hiring back of teachers that are not needed. Uh, we recognize um, the need to uh, keep a program that uh, gets our children prepared for a career workforce uh, for when they leave here and at the same time uh, providing value for the people that live here with their property and their home that being said I think that we arrived at that uh, it was an honest effort done with the parameters that we set up and also with the negotiating team with the teachers 
Um, and so I think that we're ready at this point to uh, vote on our agreement. At this point, uh, I would need a, a first Mo to accept. Motion to approve uh, the contract P12. And a second. Second. All those in favor? And those opposed? Motion carries five to two. Okay, we will move to special needs and student activities. Um, very light month for special education, just new students to the district. 12 CSE and six preschool special education meetings and things will pick up again this next month. Very um, small numbers in terms of this month's report. Okay, a motion to approve the uh, committee on special ed and the preschool special ed. Motion. Second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. The policy 8280. Uh, policy, this is the second reading of the policy for English language learners. Again, this is due to the regulatory changes at the state education department that require us to have different levels of instruction for English language learners. Um, this is really a mandatory change for the Board of Ed. It's all regulatory. So at this time we would need to approve. This is the month to approve it, yes. Okay. A motion to approve the policy change in 8280. So moved. Second. Second. Those in favor? That motion passes. Okay. Three trips for the board to consider. The first is the New York State Music Association All State Competition that happens in Rochester uh, on December 3rd through the 6th. It's an overnight trip. It involves approximately 35 students. All the information is there for the board. Uh, also, the traditional Clarence Center grade five trip to uh, Camp Seneca Lake, which would take place from June 8th to the 10th. And an overnight trip for the boys and girls cross country team at the Manhattan Invitational. Does anyone have any questions on these three trips needing approval? No, okay. And then the school, the revised school calendar. Uh, we're asking the board to consider a change in the school calendar. Um, we have the opportunity to add a vacation day. Um, the overwhelming feedback that we get from parents is to add a vacation day onto the Thanksgiving break. Uh, our recommendation is to change this year's calendar for November 25th to be a vacation, a holiday from school, and to take March 11th and make it a half of a day for K through five elementary rather than a full day for K through five elementary. Okay, and just as a review, how many snow days do we have this year? We have four um, emergency days built into the calendar. Okay. okay. This does not change that. Right. Okay, uh, we need approval for B2 through B5. Through B Motion. Okay, second. Second. Those in favor? Okay. Uh, we are at the next public comment session. I ask that you walk to the microphone as now all of our meetings are re being recorded so that it can be heard uh, and recorded on the tape, the video. And if you would give your name and address. Uh, dear President Claus and the members uh, of the Clarence Board of Education, uh, we are honored to be with you today at your school board meeting where English teachers from Hexi District Education Bureau in Tianjin of People's Republic of China to promote the educational exchange and cooperation program between the United States and China, Hexi District Education Bureau and the Clarion Central Schools District have established a formal exchange and cooperation relationship from 2002. Hexi District sent 10 groups of uh, 54 English teachers to Clarence. At the same time, more than 50 uh, administrators and 124 students from Hexi District 
have visited Clarence School District. From 2006 to 2010, Clarence sent four delegations of total 73 teachers and students to visit Hexi District. Myself and other five English teachers from Hexi District are very fortunate to be to participate, uh, partif participate in the intensive English language training program. Last week and today, we uh, visited Latview Elementary School for four days. It was a great pleasure meeting the principal, Mr. Kuwik, the teachers and the students. We came into the classroom, enjoyed the students' activities, and uh, communicated uh, with Mr. Kuwik, the teachers and the student. We had a better understanding of American teaching methods, strategy, uh, strategies, and the students' life. We also introduced the Chinese culture to the students. They're very interested in China. During the first week visiting, we made uh, great progress and received very positive feedback from the staff and the students in Clarence. We are so pleased that our oral English has been improved with the help given by the teachers and the students here. We are looking forward to visiting another three elementary schools, a middle school and a high school in Clarence in September and October. Here, I would like to say thank you to the Board of Education for your strong and consistent support to the exchange program between Clarence School District and Hexi District in these years. Also, we would like to express our gratitude to Mr. Hicks, Superintendent of Clarence School, Christine, Heather, and Kim, for their thoughtful agreement for our English training program. We believe the exchange program between Clarence and Hexi District has been, will be beneficial to both sides. And we just hope this program can be developed in the year to come. We understand that in this process, the support from the Board of Education is a key factor. And we ask you continue support for this program. Finally, as a teacher from China and a friend of Clarence, I would like to see once more Thank you, Board of Education. Thank you, Superintendent and your staff. Thank you, teachers and students of Clarence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Katrina Webster, and I just wanted to say thank you to the board for um, approving the contract for the teachers as a taxpayer and parent. Uh, it's important to me long term that we keep great teachers in Clarence and that our class sizes are not going to continue to grow and all that fun stuff. Um, so it's just a big thank you to you. I'm hoping that as we lead into budget season this year that maybe we can keep the you know, negative comments about our teachers to a minimum as we go into that season. Now that we have this contract, um, because I think as a parent, I worry about the morale of our teachers as well. And they've been through a lot these last few years. We all have. And um, you've worked very hard through that process. And as a parent, I'm really excited that this will be done and we can move forward together and make it an awesome school district. So thank, thank you. you. Any other comments? Well, I'd like to just mention that I'm, I'm happy to talk to anybody in detail about, you know, about my vote and you know, buy you lunch and we can meet together and, and discuss it. And I'll either, you know, instead of just sitting there and thinking I'm an idiot, maybe they'll confirm it for you. But I'm, I'm happy to talk about things with anybody, so. Where to go from there? I don't want to, anyone to call you an idiot. <laughs> um, I also want to make uh, inform, uh, information available that, uh, uh, as a board, one of our goals is to uh, get more information out to everyone that lives in the district uh, more regularly. 
so we are working on some uh, various methods of communication, uh, continuing the use, extensive use of our website, as well as uh, mailing information out. Uh, information will be available, ex more extensive information during our board meetings, uh, talking about the budget and the cost structure and things that, uh, as a board, we face all the time and that we would like uh, members of the community to know more about rather than trying to cram it all into the budget time period. So we're going to stretch it out so that it lasts the whole year, but so that there's opportunities for people to hear the types of things that are going on, unfunded mandates, uh, the things uh, that are addressed in terms of cost structures, the development of the cap rate, uh, what does the tax rate, uh, cap rate mean, uh, funding from the state. We're uh, going to expand that type of information uh, so that it is not uh, multiple opportunities to hear it and to ask questions and have a better understanding both for us and for the community at large. So that will begin, we've already started some with some ideas, uh, we'll begin sh uh, probably within the next month after we get done with the back to school types of things. Did you want to add to that? Um, just a couple things. One thing that will be on our website starting tomorrow will be a call to our community for any community members that would like to sit on our task force on music. Uh, we have a tremendous nationally renowned music program in the Clarence School District. We're going to take the next five or six months to study the music program as it is currently scheduled and as it is currently iterated for the kids in grades uh, four through 12. Then that particular committee is going to look at ways that music is done in other districts throughout New York State and throughout the country. And they're going to make a recommendation to the board in February if any changes are to be considered. So we've had this in the works for four or five months. We're gonna actually get it started and we're gonna call for any uh, volunteers who would like to join in. Four, three, four meetings tops, um, just like our task force on facilities last time. Look at everything that's out there. Maybe our program is the best it can be, but we're gonna take a look. Okay. Anyone uh, else have any comments or questions before we move? I just want to mention uh, that I had a chance on uh, September 10th to attend the Erie County School Board's legislative meeting, and it was very interesting. There's representatives from every uh, school board. Uh, we did take a vote to uh, ask the regents to call for a moratorium without state aid consequences uh, for the permanent uh, implementation of the new APPR. Um, and we did mention at that meeting we recognized that Dr. Hicks had written to Regent Collins asking for that, and that was a good uh, best part to discover that. And I'll be attending a meeting October 8th with uh, Regent Collins to see what she has to say. Okay. Well, that leads us right into our uh, next uh, schedule of meetings, the um, legal issues. Uh, we have the um, 96th Annual NIMSA Council Convention, October 20th, 18th through 20th. Our next board meeting is October 26. Any other unfinished business that needs to be addressed before we adjourn? We had our executive session prior to this meeting, so we will adjourn for the evening if there are no other issues or unresolved, unaddressed issues that need to be addressed. Okay, a motion to end. Thank you, motion. Second. Those in favor? Okay, have a good evening. Yes. Thank <laughs> you.